everybody. A few things I've forgotten to get just before I start. How are we today? I hope you're well. Um, <clears throat> thank you those of you who are joining me today. I didn't know what I was going to talk about today. Never do. Not until I make a start. Um, if you've been watching me each day, you will know that um, I'm here in my studio and uh, we've kind of stayed at home for the last maybe four weeks now and so every day at one o'clock weekdays have weekends off so I know when a Saturday and a Sunday is. Um, hi Eva, hi Fiona. Um, I am live, broadcasting live from the studio every day at one. To offer you some inspiration, some distraction, some reason not to watch the news, to tell you what I am up to. Fiona, yes, I am busy. Today has been a little bit frantic already. I'll explain shortly. Um, to also give me something to look forward to, someone to chat to when my family get fed up with me and don't want to hear me anymore, why would they be like that? Um, and, and to give some structure to my day, to help me always to find a silver lining in this bizarre situation. And it gets more and more bizarre as well, um, this bizarre situation that we find ourselves in. So you can see this piece behind me over here. I've called this silver lining and it's currently still on my wall because this silver lining where I was going to find or was going to suddenly have loads of time to do my own work and finish things off that just doesn't seem to be appearing and um, frankly I'm more frazzled than I was before all of this I I didn't sleep brilliantly last night so I've had two coffees this morning this is bad news and the family have decided I would be best off in the studio for the entire day um, to let that coffee wear off because I don't really do coffee. So, I didn't know what I was going to talk about today, but um, I do now because Mr Chris Rankin messaged me maybe 10 minutes ago to just kind of say how relaxing my little chats were and I don't know that I find them relaxing um, but I was truly grateful for small words of encouragement and um, small words of gratitude I, I have actually had lots of messages from people saying how much better their sewing machine is working after yesterday's little nudge to get you to look after your sewing machines and give them some TLC. So maybe this week really is all about TLC and getting a little bit of um, encouragement from other people so your machine getting some TLC and encouragement from you will make it sound and work better. Um, the lovely Mr Chris Rankin messaging me and saying you're doing a good thing really put a smile on my face and helped me to um, work out what the week was about I suppose and uh, I went straight inside and I said to Callum, Callum that construction that you've got on the patio it's looking brilliant it's this weird it's it's he's making like a gym on our patio he's had weights delivered and this is you know pumping iron kind of weights and he's building this ginormous construction on our patio a it's great that he's doing something and he's got out of bed b it's fantastic that he's designed something because there were some little drawings first before he started constructing anything. Fantastic, all for that, love it. C, fantastic that he's building something, constructing something and using all the scrap wood that's around. Just hope that he, he doesn't, um, doesn't injure himself if it collapses. 
um, it, it will mean that he's, he's less frustrated as well because he's doing something physical. So huge amounts of positives in all of that. So I just went straight inside and congratulated him on what he was doing and it felt good. And he had a little smile on his face too. So what I'm trying to say is this positive knock-on effect of one person complimenting you, next you compliment somebody else. It goes on and goes on and goes on. And we all just give one another a pat on the back and it makes you feel an awful lot better. I needed to give myself a little pat on the back today with today's um, little video. And that was really to give myself some time to do something creative i have been sewing hats and bags let me show you a hat it will amuse you one moment these are the hats that i am making and then they tie at the back and this was fabric that was destined can you see are oh, the cyclists are upside down they're the right way up on this one with a whole load of cyclists. This was gonna be, um, I'll take that off now. It was gonna be a shirt for Mark, but it's not gonna happen now. It's hats for the NHS. Um, so I've been busy making those and uh, not so creative. Felt guilty about going back to my silver lining piece. So I thought in the next 10 minutes or so, I would indulge myself in some drawing and actually drawing shouldn't feel like an indulgence. Um, it's kind of a, a creative necessity. I talked last week, I think last Tuesday, actually, another Tuesday. I talked last Tuesday about how you need to train your yourself, your eye and your hand coordination. And that practice, drawing practice, helps you to see things, helps you to observe things it helps you to articulate what your eyes see and how that's processed through your hands. And you, you, can, you can forget how to do it and you need to kind of warm yourself into it again, do warm up exercises. It's quite harsh, it's quite a lot to expect of yourself to suddenly be able to sit down and draw something that you're, you're instantly happy with. That very rarely happens in my experience but I tend to rarely sit and draw I prefer to stand and draw and those of you who are on the drawing, uh, drawing for textiles workshop at the moment you will know that I do prefer to stand up and then you can use your entire arm you can use your whole body because you can hinge at the waist and you've got a much bigger reach it makes such a big difference. You can also stand away from your page. If I tilt this down a wee bit, you can see that I've got a page down here and I can see this from a distance. If I were sitting down, down here, everything's just too close. So actually it's a good idea to be at arm's length from whatever it is you're drawing. You can step back more easily. You can review things in a different way. So. I would encourage you to um, include some practice into your drawing into, and, and view it more as observation rather than drawing because when you, um, it's just a terminology thing, it's definitely not sketch, you definitely shouldn't be sketching. Sketching suggests that it's a little bit flippant, you haven't made up your mind about what you're doing yet. Draw deliberately draw consciously and practice it and repeat it in the same way that you would do musical scales, in the same way that you would do maths exercises, English exercises, things like that. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So I am, I've got a book here. I was kind of struggling for paper in my studio because it's all in Italy. Um, so there was a, a brown sketchbook which I have dismantled already. I find the phrase sketchbook misleading uh, for reasons I've just said, um, but also I find them awkward when they are all stapled together and you may be using a wet media. 
you can't turn the pages over so you're kind of limited to do one thing at a time wait for it to dry if you dismantle the book and then put it back together later it's not an issue swiped a plant from the house kind of felt that i spend a lot of time in this a lot more time in the studio at the moment than i might normally do so i wanted a bit of bit of greenery around me and um because i happen to find white um sorry brown paper i thought i might use some white paint on top of it so that i get highlights and low lights so that's what i'm going to concentrate on i am going to turn you down so that you can see what i'm doing a little bit better i won't be able to see what you're saying to me but you'll be able to see what i'm up to and then um well, I'll just carry on and kind of talk my way through it. So picked up a pencil and today I am looking at my subject and like last week where I wasn't, but the majority of my time I'm looking, you can't tell this, you can't see, I'm looking at my subject and not at the page. So I'm following a line round, taking one, one leaf at a time in a continuous line kind of fashion, following the wrinkled edges of this plant, kind of pushing the the pencil where I need it to go. There are occasions where the line, um, like here for instance where I just was, there was a vein crossing the edge or kind of connecting with the edge of the leaf so I decided to follow that. I am not in this instance looking at the entire area of each leaf or of, of the plant rather i'm taking one leaf at a time and following the edge and following the line of that leaf and they will connect with one another all the leaves will connect and build into a full composition that will give the well the impression of this plant as opposed to it being a a direct kind of perfect drawing i'm not interested in that i'm interested in getting the characteristics of the plant, characteristics of the shapes of the leaves. If I wanted to um, have a true representation of the plant, I'd just take a photo. I'm interested in the way that I might see something in a different way to the way that it is portrayed by by a camera I suppose that's more that's more interesting to me seems to me to be something that is um, I guess more educational to me I'm learning more I'm learning more about the plant than I would be if I were taking a photo for one. I'm learning something about the way that I have to work in order to represent these different characteristics. So it's making me work harder but making helping me to understand how I view things, how I view view objects and the how I start to understand these different objects and how I interrelate one leaf with the next leaf 
as well. They're all little little problems and here I haven't got it quite right where this these two cross one another but that's something that I can learn from and I'm not going to beat myself up about it and I am not going to get a rubber out. I'm kind of quite staggered in the way that I'm speaking because I'm actually concentrating really hard on where one one leaf starts and stops and where one leaf is placed in comparison to the next. Right, there's kind of there's kind of a structure there. And I just really fancied getting some pale on there. So I'm squinting now. No idea how this is going to turn out. And to be honest, how it turns out is kind of irrelevant. The thing that is important is the time spent doing it and the fact for me actually today the importance in this is that I stop a little bit I breathe a little bit and I concentrate for a brief period of time on something other than that which I was doing and it seems to me that at the moment that's a pretty important thing to be doing to take ourselves outside of where we were where we might be where we might end up so i'm squinting and looking for pale areas and putting in those pale areas wherever they may be and I've got one size of brush which limits me it limits what I can do I'm happy to work within those limitations because it can stretch how I use that one thing it forces me to work in in different ways you, you, I like the idea of being inventive with little, with a, with very few things. A bit like the way some of my meals have been this week. Inventive, not always great. But our fridge is full of onions at the minute. Well, the cupboard is full of onions. Asda did a delivery on Sunday night, meant to tell you this. And um, they replaced an awful lot of things for onions so we've got a lot of onions <laughs> huge amount of onions I'm not quite sure why they did that but apparently I'd agreed to it so onion soup is us can you see the way that everything is gradually kind of cascading outwards from the center I'm not making that happen deliberately it's just the way things are are there normally when you work on white paper you would be adding always adding dark lines every now and again it's a good idea to kind of swap it round work the other way almost work in a negative way so you start to add in highlights rather than always just the dark and um, just add dark bits add highlights too so let's see how this works when we put some dark over the top Get a bit of welly so we can reinforce some areas and give them a bit more power so there's a particularly prominent area you can give it more weight and at the same time working in a kind of mixed media way you can be playing and exploring media so I'm still following different lines that I see and as my this is a big chunky piece of um, graphite stick as that crosses into the paint it kind of slips a little bit so 
the way that my hand moves over a wet area in comparison to a dry area changes the flow of the mark. So you can start to experiment and explore media at the same time as um, practicing your observation. And you need to understand that when you practice, it's okay to make, make mistakes. That's what practicing kind of is all about. And also, it's important that you know that I never have a plan. Well, there are some plans, but I never have a plan or a full knowledge of how something is going to turn out. Because if I did, then, well, the journey would be, the journey to that place would be a bit boring. There would be no discovery. I've got to learn something on the way, otherwise it's all just bland. So things I have learnt today. Be nice to folk, compliment them, be nice to yourself, give yourself a little bit of time, don't drink two coffees. And I have learnt something about the way that this paint works with graphite. Okay, I'm going to leave my nattering there. I don't know how long I've been doing that. So, um, <laughs> yay for the onions. They could be your currency for the next few weeks. I think they probably could. Yes. Um, so there's, there's my, my day. I'm going to spend another 10 minutes playing with this and then get on with more sewing. I will be back at one o'clock tomorrow, Senza Cafe, and um, I hope you'll join me then. If you have enjoyed the video and found small inspiration from it in some way, please share and if you have just joined then uh, yes I could use the onions to dye fabric, nice idea because I haven't got much dye with me. Um, if you have just joined then you can catch the video from the beginning because I'll post it on the Facebook page. If you haven't had a chance to make one of your blocks for the virtual log cabin quilt please take a look at that. The information is on the website. Please share that as well and get as many um, people involved with that as, as you can. Help me out. Help us out. So I'm doing that in conjunction with Janice Gunner and the African Fabric Shop. That's Maggie and Bob. Um, there we go. I'll see you tomorrow, one o'clock. And... Uh, I hope you're enjoying some of the sun. Stay at home, stay well, stay safe, just keep sewing. <laughs>